Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff, your tropical plant party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am great. <laughs> beautiful, rainy day. It's not that beautiful. It's actually, it's pretty cold out. The rain is good though. We really need the rain. It's been a while. I originally had a plan for this video. I'd been kind of working on it throughout the entire month of October, just the process of getting the plants ready and the grow space and everything and it was just kind of like a month in the life and then i decided to th i don't want to do that i'm scrapping the whole thing starting over fresh i had originally planned and talked about on the channel about doing a video setting up the grow space and just kind of the whole process of getting the plants ready and trying to put it all into one video and i decided after a few weeks of kind of piecemealing that together that i don't i don't really want that to be a thing that exists at least not this year because it was kind of like a month in the life sort of thing and there's just there's a lot of cancery stuff with the things that have been going on this year and i just i don't want that to be tied into a video that people may go back to watch over the years on what i do with my growth space because it's just you know not like the happiest time in my life so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, squash that and <laughs> try that again next year so instead just going to be doing a vlog of getting things ready over these next few weeks here go out to the grow space y'all get to see the uh, horrific mess that got left behind when i got sick and just said screw it i said screw it i'll clean this up later when i'm feeling better and it's time go have a look at that go see all that mess finally get this process started it's about time you never know when it's going to get cold here it used to be like mid to late November, but I have a feeling probably within like two weeks or so, maybe two and a half weeks, it's gonna be time to move them in around late October. And I'm finally feeling good enough to like do uh, the physical labor and those sorts of things. It's still slowly, but it's gonna be a little bit of a drawn out process. Hey pumpkin, it's nice to see you on the way to the garage. I don't wanna do it pumpkin. I don't wanna show them. I don't wanna show everybody the mess that's out there. This is going to be humiliating. I have a kiss. This little one. Oh, thanks, pumpkin. Such a sweetheart. Why do you look so mad about being pet? Not in the mood? Did I disrupt you? Okay. Yeah, you good girl, pumpkin. Got a fresh spike coming out of the ginger. This is me procrastinating. Do you want to see it? Do you want to see what's going on out there? Okay, I will show you. I really don't want to, though. Well, here it is. Okay, allow me a moment to explain myself. Typically, the whole process of setting up the grow space in the fall takes like a day, maybe two. A few hours each day, not a big deal. And then in the spring, I move the plants back out. It takes a couple days to clean everything up, put everything away, and make room to bring the cars back in. This year was different because of the tumor and the cancer and all the surgeries and everything and i just i wasn't able to do it i couldn't clean the so things got kind of out of hand <laughs> that's putting things very lightly i had people helping me with things but i wanted that time that precious time i had with people helping me to be prioritized for taking care of the plants that were outside and the landscaping and the garden and then my pets those had to be top priority I wasn't going to be like, hey, thanks for your help with all that stuff. Now would you come in here and mind cleaning up my garage? Couldn't bring myself to do it. So I was like, well, I guess we'll just let this go and get back to it in October. And here we are. Yeah, it's bad. This is really bad. It, one of the reasons it got so bad is because when I had people helping me with things, they would grab things off the tool bench and just set them down and not put... Like, this, is, this isn't just me. Like, I would never leave things piled up like this and all over my desk, but it's what happened. There were a few plants that I just kind of said, I don't know what to do with this outside, so just throw it in the pool pond. There's a pump and they're circulating things and they did okay. The Chef Lara was basically dead, so I was like, we'll throw it in there as a last ditch effort. But then the Monstera it has thrived and actually done very well being completely unattended to with just water circulating around it. I don't know why there's caladiums in here. Haven't figured that one out yet, but okay, that's fine, just whatever. And then like this area over here got set up as like where to bring packages in and decontaminate them before bringing the house because of COVID. This cordelin here was so covered in mealybugs that I was like, don't bring it outside with the rest of the plants. That's what I told people who were helping me. I was like, it just, it needs to go. Just put that in the yard waste, which never happened. And it's, uh, it's doing, I mean, I wouldn't say it's doing well, but it's been putting on new growth with no water or care for five months. So 
I'd say that it deserves a place to stay. So this will get cleaned off, sprayed down and everything. I'll do that before I bring the rest of the plants in. What I need to focus on right now is, well, obviously cleaning and organization. A lot of the things that you see right here that like this mess are things that get used when the plants come in. So that's part of why things look a little bit ridiculous. Normally like all these milk crates would go up into my attic, but that was obviously not happening this year. I have my old hamster cage from dear Rio who passed just a few weeks ago. A little hamster soul, rest in peace. And I do have some plants in here that are very thirsty, but I just, they randomly got brought in because of a cold snap. So the first thing I actually need to do before I even get started cleaning is I wanna go through here, kind of think about what I wanna do this year with the ceiling. Because once the plants are in and this pond is full of water, I can't move this. And then I can no longer get to the ceiling to do the things up there that need to be done. Now, one thing I know for sure that I want to do is I want to replace both of these red lights up there and then the one over there that's a mix of blue and white those are actually aquarium lights from years ago i think one of them might be made for plants but i'm talking like at least 10 years ago i used to have these over the filter of my fish tank my saltwater tank for the refugiums i didn't like them the macroalgae wasn't growing well so i thought okay i'll bring them outside but the thing is these red lights i don't like them they give me headaches they mess up my lighting when i'm filming things and I didn't change them out last year because the cold came so quickly that I just didn't have an opportunity to go ahead and get those replaced. So I need to order some more light bulbs. These right here are what I have usually just been using. They're just from like Lowe's, Home Depot, big box stores. I got a whole bunch of them on clearance last year. I think that was in a vlog. And the plants actually loved these. That's what's up here and there and there. Plants grew really, really well under these, but they have a pretty direct Beam. I would like something a little bit more wide, kind of like this bulb that you can see. Well, you can't really see it, but there's that big bright thing over there. That is a bulb from Sansai. I tried that out last year and I really liked it. And so uh, and now that I've had it for a year, I can say, okay, I like it enough. They're not terribly expensive for a grow bulb. So I need to order one, two, three of those. I need to get that done. This fan up until like an hour ago hasn't worked in months. I'm still gonna replace it because I want it to oscillate. So I'm going to order some cheap fans to put up here. That needs to be done definitely before, at least before the plastic, there will be plastic that goes up and around this area. Once that plastic is up, it is really hard to get a ladder in here to get that changed. So I'm gonna order some cheap fans. I'm not buying nice ones anymore. They don't last. That's just been my experience over the last like seven years. The nice ones, they just, they just break. If we have to keep changing them out, might as well get cheap ones, right? So I'll go ahead and get those things ordered and then I need to, oh, there's so much cleaning to do. It's okay. Cleaning's fun. Only one dead plant. That's not bad. Technically the Chef Lara is not dead, but I also really don't see a reason to keep it, right? Because I didn't even find it necessary like I didn't even care about the plant enough to want to save it so while I'm not proud of it it is what happened had to prioritize and that it, did, it didn't make the cut sorry chef Lara I need to get these trays cleaned out these are where these smaller plants sit throughout the winter time I kept them full of water actually for most of the summer but they just recently started to evaporate out I was contemplating maybe painting these or just like taping paper or something over the front because people get so upset about the algae algae doesn't hurt anything it's not hurting the plants it's not a big deal but i was thinking about maybe painting it just so i don't have to see the comments of people going oh it's gross it's algae it's fine it's not hurting anything we'll see about that because i also want to make sure it stays clear because i have holes drilled in the top up here that i push my wicking cord through to help keep the plants watered so I don't know, I'm still toying around with that idea. I have a lot of pots to organize. There are leaves all over the ground. These pet things need to get cleaned up and put into the attic. These are most like everything here has been sterilized and sanitized. They're ready to be put away. I just haven't done it yet. And then is this whole thing. I'm gonna have to take this outside and get it hosed out. I don't try and keep this crystal clear, but I also like, I mean, that's too much, right? That's gross. I will do that tomorrow because it's supposed to be like 20 degrees warmer tomorrow. And then I'll get it filled halfway and fill the rest with the, I'll probably vlog the whole thing. We will see. Yeah, I think my main priority today needs to be that I need to order those bulbs, the fan, and um, yeah, that's a lot of cleaning and organizing. Sometimes when I'm having trouble figuring out where to get started, I just try and pick something up and do something with it. This is a bunch of wicking cord that I'll be using for the self-watering things this year. Go over here. So there, boom, I did something. Oftentimes I just use like cotton yarn, but since I'm 
trying to not go anywhere so i know a lot of other people are too i just went and ordered because it it's like seven bucks for a hundred feet of it i'm like that's fine i don't need we don't need to talk about that. that's not what's happening right now oh no who broke my mushroom some of my favorite things out here how did that hit that's not really broken right i don't know why my voice is cracking yeah i can glue that back together that's not the end of the world tools i don't know where to put these i got new tools but the tool shelf is full of other tools which is usually a good reason to not get more things right my drill was broken i didn't have a choice it was a good deal oh and if anyone was wondering i tried an awful lot of different light bulbs before settling on those sylvania ones these are all different bulbs that i've tried over the years these are actually photography lights which the plants love but they're 85 watts each which just isn't necessary anymore with the leds you know that uses up a lot of electricity this is scary right probably should have bubble wrapped those things i'm gonna take them inside test them out see what still works because some of these are really really old especially those photography lights and then i have a different box that i keep all my bulbs in that's much larger than this and will be much more safe this was probably a bad way to do this okay it's not much but making progress i have my chair back now i'd like to have my desk back oh there's the peppermint oil i was looking everywhere for this this is good stuff for spraying the bugs and getting them off the plants works great especially for spiders spiders hate this stuff this is this isn't that bad i just need this is stuff that needs to be put away i guess that's that's the theme of everything out here i didn't need to necessarily explain that i also have a bowl full of rocks here just because you know sometimes you need some rocks so you gotta have your bowl with your rocks in them in case you're doing a project you're doing smarts and crafts you go oh i need my rocks well they're over there they're in the bowl i know where they are <laughs> well my goal was to get the desk cleaned off and instead i started working on everything over here there was just things coming out all the way over things that have just fallen off the shelves it was just a mess however Made some progress. I mean, it's still a mess, but much better, especially considering it's only like 20 minutes worth of work. This isn't like it looks a lot worse than it is. It's a lot of just supplies that just need to be kind of organized and put where they need to go. The main thing that I need to do next is when I need to get these pots and things outside so I can drill holes in them. It's easier to do outdoors because you can use the hose. You know, you need to have water moving around those diamond bits. I'll do that tomorrow because it is dark outside. Side. don't want to do that now it's going to warm up tomorrow and then i can take this outside get that chef lara out of there that poor little chef lara i'll give it a look and see how much green there still is in there i, mean, I can see it doesn't look that great from right here but you know won't really know until i touch it and start seeing like how tender and snappy it is get this whole thing outside get it rinsed off bring it back in start filling it up move anything out of here that needs to go up into my attic or or just wherever they need to go start clearing some more things out that really that's about it it's really at this point just organizing which will be pretty quick and easy i did also go ahead and order some more foil to try and get up on the ceiling right here because you can see i only have it in a small spot that's just because that's how much i had and i ran out and the stuff was kind of expensive especially several years ago it cost a lot more but that attic isn't insulated so it would make sense to go ahead and finish covering this area up at least as much as i can that will help keep the heat from going up and getting into the attic that's the waste of air it's why i always like to have a fan on out here to blow the warm air down but still that would be helpful because the attic is not insulated and insulating the attic would be a nightmare of a project it's a lot easier to just get the foil stuff stapled up there to help keep the cold up there and keep the heat down here hopefully that'll be here in a few days with the lights and the new fans i don't know shipping's kind of unpredictable right now mostly excited to get this outside cleaned up refilled get the water going again because that's just kind of when things start coming together out here and then get some things put up in the attic the iguana is having a playtime over there on some of the plants went ahead let it get out stretch its legs for a little while we don't need to we'll catch up in the morning when it's time to scoot this thing outside finally got this pool pond moved out and it, it just it started pouring and got very cold it dropped like 20 degrees in a few minutes so that can wait don't worry the iguana's not in there the iguana's in the house lots of space here to move around going to do some sweeping some sterilizing once i move the rest of these things off the mat here i have these foam pads laid down just to help keep the cold from that cement from coming up to the undersides of the pots i've recently started putting a lot of the plants on top of these milk crates though 
so they're elevated no matter what. I used to just use two by fours and have those laid down so the plants would be laid up even when they were on top of the foam. But the weight on those was so heavy it would still kind of push down and imprint and not leave a big enough gap for drainage. So that's why I switched over to just using these milk crates. They've been working fine. Desk is, it's not clean, but there's less on it. I found a couple of cryptanthus while I was cleaning up. These poor little babies, like they had fallen behind a bunch of boxes, I guess when things were being moved outside. They've had no light or water for like eight and a half months, something like that. I'm gonna take these inside and put them underneath a glass cloak with some water and see what happens. I don't have high hopes, but we'll see. I'm only giving these a very, very light drink, so I don't wanna shock them. I'll put one over there, just enough to give them a little kiss of moisture. Maybe if I pull those leaves towards the inside. No, no. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, there we go. It ain't pretty, but give it a couple weeks, see what they do. In the meantime though, the fans and the light bulbs came in the mail, and now that I have this open space here, I can get the ladder out and get up there and change some things around. I'm gonna be so happy to not have those red bulbs up there anymore. One thing I'm really glad about today, I'm just in one of those moods where cleaning, it's fun. I really don't mind this. And it's easy too, since I already have to sweep up over there and just get that stuff off the desk. Was that hard for anybody? Was it difficult to see me just that stuff over there? I have to blow all this out and clean it anyways. I don't know where my dustpan went. And my tripod broke yesterday, so that's, that's fantastic. It held up a long time. I've had that tripod for at least, I wanna say four years, and it spends a lot of time outside. And it gets wet fairly often, so I'm not totally shocked that it broke. Sweeping motion, I know you're supposed to go with the grain, but plastic. It's still easier to go with the grain though I can get inside of everything. Uh, it feels so nice to be sitting at the desk again. It's been a long time. So these are the bulbs, the ones from Sansai. This company reached out to me, I want to say in 2019, asking me to do a video with their products. I didn't respond because I tend to not want to promote anything until I've actually tried it. I usually prefer to actually just spend the money on the product, see how I like it so I can give an honest review. Now that I've been using the bulbs for, I mean, over a year, I can say that I do like at least the one that I tried. At first glance, they feel a little bit cheap, but they also, I mean, they kind of are. These aren't very pricey as far as grow lights are concerned. And while I'm thinking about it, I should turn these off so those can cool off so I don't burn my fingertips when I change these. What I liked about these bulbs was that they had a fairly wide distribution and the plants that I had underneath that one up there, the ones that were within a few feet of it actually kind of scorched a little bit. It was a little bit too strong, which says something about the power of the bulb. Always want the plants to be within a few feet of the grow lights. It, I mean, it depends on what you're growing. There are lots of variables to consider. That can make things a little bit more tricky when it, I have to hang those bulbs up higher. So that alone is kind of what sold me on them, was that they were that powerful. I like that they had a nice wide beam to them and that they were burning my plants. It wasn't like horrible scorch, but it was enough where I was like, oh, this is a bit much. I think there was an epidendrum orchid underneath one of those, which they can take a lot of light. Still an orchid though, so I mean, it's gonna be more prone to some scorching. Then there was a pothos next to that that got kind of crispy and even my Eureka palm, which is normally like right here when that pond's in here and it has fronds that go all the way up and over there. Those fronds had gotten fairly close. So while I do like my little cheapy cheap spotlights that I've been using, the plants seem to appreciate them too. I just figured since I have to go through the hassle of getting the ladder out and going up and changing those red bulbs out that I may as well use something that's like actually intended for plants and has a wider beam to it. And that'll help light the entire area up more evenly. Okay, switching over to phone mode, so going to be a drop in video and audio quality. Sorry about that. Some of these bulbs have been up here for like, I want to say five or six years. So I am impressed with the quality as far as that's concerned. That's the only thing about the Sansai bulbs is I do wish that they had a metal heat sink instead of a plastic one. But maybe that's, maybe that stays cooler. I don't know. All right, moment of truth. Do the bulbs work? Let's hope so. Oh, that is nice, nice, bright, crisp, clean daylight. So much better than those red and blue bulbs. I couldn't stand those things. I have no idea how well it's going to show on camera, but this entire area is much, much, much brighter than it was before. That light, like I said, it's dispersed much more evenly. These two bulbs right here are 54 watt. This one's a 36. These two are 54, and I, I can't find these for sale anymore, which is unfortunate because these were great over the sumps of my fish tanks where I grow my plants. But like I said, I don't see them that high of a wattage anymore, but the LEDs seem to be more efficient, so that doesn't even really seem to 
matter, right? Because these sand size, these are 36 watts, right? Yeah, 36 watts, and I feel like much brighter. But it's not really a fair comparison, though, right? Since one of them was red and blue and... These are just all white. Eh, whatever, you get the point. It's much brighter in here. Then one other thing I was thinking about doing before I move that pool pond back in here is resealing this whole area up here. There's a gap right up there. You can kind of see there's some folded plastic in there. That is the hardest spot to seal off in the winter time because I can't ever get the ladder over there because the pool pond's in the way and it's hard to, like my arms aren't long enough. So I'll probably grab some rubbing alcohol and get the ceiling cleaned up so the tape will stick better and get that plastic put up just in that little spot up there. Might as well do it now. I'll be happy about that in a few weeks or maybe a few months. I don't know. Whenever I do the plastic, I'll be happy that that's already up and done. And I thought about taking down this Ikea chandelier because I they haven't had a bulb in there in years. The clips are broken. It's falling apart. But for some reason, I'm sort of attached to it. Even though it looks terrible and I've been purging lots of other things, for some reason, that seems to be where I draw the line. I don't know. Maybe I'll change my mind here and do that. I probably should. I, I mean, it looks terrible. Or maybe get some zip ties so it at least looks nice. Yeah, that's probably what I'll do. That's I'll just try and fix it. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, you see that? The tape last year just wouldn't stick. This kept falling down, which is very frustrating. That's why I came up here. I did some dusting. Hopefully the alcohol will help dry out whatever residues were up there and keeping the tape from sticking. That's the plan anyways. This is kind of a difficult spot up here. The rest of the garage isn't as bad. There's tape marks up there, but I have a different plan for how I'm going to hang the plastic this year. I do not think will be happening in this video. That'll probably be a different one. Gosh, the number of dead bugs up here, it's disgusting. Also, that has been driving me crazy for a couple of years, so get rid of that. Hey, yeah, it's better. I mean, kind of. It looks terrible, but it'll get the job done. That's always one of the bigger challenges in here is keeping the heat in. That's why, you know, the foils on the ceiling and everything. But this spot up here is always where a lot of the heat gets out and a lot of the cold comes in. It's not a thick layer of plastic, but it's enough that with the circulation fans blowing the warm air back down, that's going to make a big difference. And I do this every year, but not to this extent. Like I usually already have the plants in here, the ponds on the ground. So I stand over here with the pole in my hand and I like try and feed the plastic through and just like stab some tape up in random spots using a stick. That's not the most effective way to get that done. So now that's done, that's the spot that's always out of access when I'm getting the plastic put up to hold the heat in. So now it's sweeping, mopping time. Then I can get that pond cleaned up and bring that back in here. Oh shoot, I forgot about the chandel- I, uh, I'll take a stab at it. It's missing a lot of parts, so if I can't easily get this looking nice, I'm gonna go ahead and take it down. Look at how gorgeous the trees are. Crazy to think that when I started this video, not that it matters, I didn't really fill anybody in as to the date, but things were still all green and lush and it was so warm. Now it's cold and the plants are starting to look sad. Oh, I got the chandelier thing looking a little bit better. It's not perfect but it's better. Now that the rain has mostly subsided, I'll go ahead and grab the hose and get that pool pond cleaned up. Oh, I'm gonna miss all this. So pretty. No, this hose sprays everywhere. That's why I'm back to using my phone and because it's drizzly outside. But I thought this might be satisfying to watch. I learned last year this liner's gotten very old and very porous and because of that, it's really hard to get everything off there. I use vinegar and bleach and all kinds of things and they were still just stains everywhere. Then after moving it in and having the water in there for a while, I was able to go ahead and scrub it and most of the stuff came right up and got cleaned up by the filters. So that will have to do for now. now. Unfortunately, my garden hose is like three feet shy of being able to reach the pond. Like it's literally just a couple feet short of being able to reach this, but I have an extension hose here. Pretty much the only time I've ever even used this thing, got it on clearance like a hundred feet long which is totally unnecessary when I only need a few feet but hey whatever I'll take it it helps all right let's see if there's any holes or kinks left in this thing sometimes these expand back out when you get the water in them or they kink up terribly even though they're not supposed to my camera just flipped as if I was filming it through I hope I wasn't filming this the wrong direction I feel like the water should definitely be coming out by now I know that's real gross like I said once there's water in here I can go to scrub the filter or clean the rest of that out all right, so while this is filling up I'll start working on cleaning up the other side of my garage in case I need to rush some plants inside it's a good thing I did that too because you, there was a cold snap just I had a feeling I've been watching the weather and been like yeah I, do, I don't trust it so 
I did have to rush some things and this whole area here had just gotten to be a disaster. So I got that nice and tight. I mean, it doesn't look tidy. There were things on the shelf from like 2014, like expired products and things like that. And just anything that I hadn't touched within the last year, I got rid of. Lots of bags to go to Goodwill, just purging. Just getting rid of things I don't need or want in my life anymore. This Dracaena, look how much growth that's put on. I don't know if you'll remember, but this is just, it was just a little thing when I got it. It was maybe a foot tall a couple of years ago. And it's a plant that I've always had somewhat, somewhat, it's a plant I've always had somewhat tucked away in the garden I keep in a shady spot during the summertime. And it put on a good foot of growth. You can see that it wasn't getting a lot of light because there is some stretching in here but it's all right it looks okay the only downside to having to rush the plants in is that i wasn't able to spray them down usually i spray the plants about once a week for about a month with soaps de powder those sorts of things to help get the bugs off of them but when you have to rush that's not really an option and it doesn't look like it's going to stop raining i've been looking at the extended 14 day forecast for the rest of october and there's like two nice days and uh, that's about it. Sometimes those 14 day forecasts aren't the most reliable, but it's all I have to go off of. So because of that, I'm planning things out a little bit differently this year. Usually I go ahead and set the filters up in here, move the fish in and everything. But because I think I'm going to need to do some spraying once all the plants are in here, and I mean consistent spraying, weekly sprayings with soaps and oils, I don't really want the fish in because even though pretty much all those things are safe, neem is not safe technically for aquatic animals and maybe even reptiles and birds. The soaps, same thing, and it's goldfish. So as long as the air pumps keep moving in their little pond outside and the hole stays in the top, they'll be okay. I could technically leave them out there all year. I don't think I'm going to do that, but I think I'm probably going to wait at least six to eight weeks before I bring the fish in after the plants are in. That way I can spray every single week. And then when I'm done with all that, I can drain it down, clean it out again. And bring the fish in get it clean and tidy when I a little bit more safe when it gets to a point where I'm only spraying like once a month like I just do it preventatively then I can just throw a tarp or something over this but I don't want to be doing that once a week maybe even twice a week that's too much I don't I don't want to mess with all that I just have this screen sitting here because it's toying around with an idea for like propagation tables I don't think I'm going to do anything with that maybe later there are a lot of projects that I might tackle this winter and that could be something that might be fun. As soon as I saw it dipping down into the water like that, I immediately, it like triggered my pet lover. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to put turtles in here. I'm not going to do because I don't want a heat source hanging from the ceiling down above here. That just seems really dangerous when there's like water and humidifiers and everything. Then I have a 200 watt basking bulb just dangling in the middle of everything. That's a bad idea. I'm not going to do that. But it'd be fun because I love turtles. All right, so now that I've handled that side of the garage, this port, by the way, I know you've probably seen it. That epipenum, that poor little Cebu Blue, that thing is so mad at me. I, I went too long without watering. It's okay though, I gave it a good drink and its leaves are popping back up, but yeah, I just dropped the ball there. Oops. On that note, let's look at plants that are alive, but should be dead. Some of them are dead. Let's have a dead plant tour or an almost dead tour. These are plants that I guess just didn't make it out when my helpers were bringing plants out. They had like fallen down in between things. It was kind of a mad dash to get things done when all the health stuff started happening but there's a couple of hawathorias here which i'm not surprised that these are okay because they're really tough sturdy plants there's an agave back here this poor agave to pull this out it's really it needs a drink and a repot don't know how that's alive but somehow it is i mean it's a succulent so i'm not shocked but still none of these plants have been touched in months like eight or nine months it's a long time with the succulents i'm not as surprised about them being okay it's still shocking though that was a long time without any water this is zanzibar aloe right here does not like to focus i remember that from when i did a video on those guys the camera does not like those and look at this dracaena this is sandariano the ones that the lucky bamboo comes from i know it doesn't look good but it's technically still alive i do need to be very delicate and gentle with these plants they have nothing to them so they'll probably fall apart very very easily this one i'm really surprised about this is one of my orchids it's a chysis i got this at the orchid show last year and i was looking for it everywhere outside and I couldn't find it. I just assumed that the squirrels and the chipmunks had run off with it because they do that with little orchids sometimes. But now it's got new growth coming out of it. 
So that's a nice surprise. And then there's this Ripsalis in here. Now, I don't know if that's technically alive or if it just didn't die off. Either way, I'm gonna give it a little drink. Oh, and I found my Aphelandra. I was looking for that one too. Here it is. It's dead. It had fallen behind a bunch of pots and things that were stacked over there. It's unfortunate, but hey, at least that mystery solved. I know where that is. And then this is actually from a video that I never released. I don't know why, because I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But I did a cocodema with some self-watering cord underneath it, and I planted this lovely fern in it. And it was mostly, I think the reason the video never came out was because I didn't finish it. I started it, then I wanted to see what this would look like if I kept the basin full, how well the cocodema would wick water up, and then see how well the fern would survive. In spite of this being dead, it's still actually quite lovely, and I don't hate it. Like, I'm going to take this inside, and that's going to be some fall decor for a while. It's not falling to pieces, it has a neat texture to it. Obviously, I'd prefer for the plant to be alive, but still like that actually looks kind of cool doesn't it so that's everything and in the grand scheme of things that's not too bad most of the plants i ended up losing from not being able to take care of things were like orchids and these are all succulents so i'm going to do with all of these is i'll get them down onto one of these tables and give them all a very small drink today and then tomorrow i will give them a heavier drink i just i don't want to shock them send them into some sort of root rot or anything like that so just a light drink just a little something to let them know that they're about to get watered and then tomorrow i'll give them a heavier drink and i'm not going to take these dead leaves off until this has had a couple of days to take in some water just because that growth is going to be really delicate from being so dry and dehydrated very brittle plant but that is something i have to handle now because i've got my lights set back up over here so they're going to want to start photosynthesizing and everything so they need a drink so with that said it's time to handle my shelves at this point it's just a matter of organizing pottery i'll pop the lids off these give them a wipe down but otherwise this area is fairly ready to grow oh and here's a fountain that i got on clearance at michael's last year before the covid thing this is like 10 or 15 bucks marked down from i don't know 100 it was overpriced whatever it was but i thought it was so cute and I never got it set up. I think that would be a fun thing to have around in the grow space at some point this year. Or I might put it in the iguana enclosure. I don't know. I'm entirely certain about that. I think it would be nice to have running water and with the iguana. But the thing about iguanas is they poop in their water. Like they they make their water filthy. So I would only want a water feature if it's something that's really easy to clean out. And this, I don't think that that's going to be the case with this. That doesn't matter. I'm getting ahead of myself. Need to get this situated and then can get back to doing some plant things. I actually have some plants that I need to go ahead and move on to these. Lots of my little heliconias and things that it just, they shouldn't be outside anymore. So yeah, need to stop talking, get to working. Slight deviation and change of plans. It, it got kind of cold out of absolutely nowhere. So just move some things in not the way i like to do it i usually i will have talked about this in a video prior to this about cleaning the plants up and getting them ready to bring in but i wasn't able to do that because it was a bit of a mad dash it was more of a panic getting everything in here so i put things over here along this wall just so that i still have some room to work over here and get a little bit more tidying done. I didn't move everything in. I only moved in the things where I was like, I'd be really bummed if something were to happen to these. And I realized at that moment last night that I've, I've detached from a lot of my plants. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Or the, that wasn't necessarily like, if the plant dies, I'm not gonna be upset about it. It was also whether or not they could take the cold. Cause they were saying it was gonna get down to 34. I thought, oh, instead of risk it, I'm gonna go ahead, pull these in just to be safe and then did frost claws over the other plants. So I obviously I need to finish up all of this so that I can get the plants put over here. This is where the plants are supposed to be. Not supposed to be over there, it's supposed to be over here. I need to find some place to put the lawnmower. That's not where that goes. I did get a lot done over here, which is where I left off before transitioning over to randomly talking about bringing plants inside. I do have some more cleaning to do. Like I need to get these wiped down a little bit more. I'm gonna be doing a soap rinse on everything that soap water is going to drain down in there and that'll loosen things up and I can dump it, clean them up. Not bothered by that. I pulled all the heliconias and things that are really cold sensitive, put them over here on the table and, and you can see it. I started moving the plants in. I raised this table up also. I noticed last year that a lot of the plants I kept on this shelf were crisping up very, very quickly. I was only able to move it up by about two inches because I have my old parrot cage hanging here. I didn't want to get rid of it because it was expensive, so now it just hangs from my ceiling. That's something I should probably purge and get rid of, but either way, I can't raise it up any higher than this, but I think that that should be fine because it's up a couple more inches. It's now the same height as this table and nothing burned over here. Not that many plants burned over here. I just noticed I had to water them a ton more, and I think that it was just too much 
light. Is it just me or the LEDs over here? They're like super bright on this one, not on this one. Do I need to, is it just, one of these has a dimming function. Yes, okay. This is the one that has the dimming function. They all should have it, but for some reason, don't. I got them like a year apart. I tested out one or two for one year and liked the results and went back. I got them from Sam's Club and got more and they didn't have that dimming on them. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna go outside and start, I guess, cleaning plants up and moving some more things in. In the process, finish getting the floor all cleaned up. It's like 50 degrees outside, so it's much nicer than it has been the last few days. So I need to utilize the time to use the hose and it's sunny. Oh, it's been so long. It's been such a long time. I've missed the sun and need to clean out the gorilla cart. Definitely don't need these sitting in here anymore. Finish all this up and start moving plants inside. I have family in town to help me with the process of the heavy lifting, so I don't know how much of it I'll be filming kind of awkward following other people around with a camera. That and I do this every year, so it's not like, oh, what's he doing? I'm moving the plants inside. Right, time to start gathering up the plants. That one cartload over here, there's only one plant that I forgot to bring in that I really should have, and that was the mother and daughter croton, the one with the little spoons that hang off the end of the leaves. It's okay, it's not dead, but clearly it has some, <laughs> it definitely has some cold damage. It'll be okay though. I mean, heck, the crotons tend to throw a fit when they go in the house anyway. I did just remember that I have some alocasias back here that I need to uh, get out. They need to be dug up. Pardon the background noise, there's a shop vet going nearby. So I guess I should go ahead and start cutting these guys out and lift the big ones out. Get them rinsed off and ready to go inside. You can see it, they're definitely ready for it. Lots of cold damage on the upper growths of the plants. But everything down low is looking okay on them. Things are still nice and firm, so I'm not worried about rot anything like that. I wish I had like one more week because they're starting to do a little bit of dieback on their own, which really would be ideal. I don't like to force them into it, but I don't really think I have a choice. 26 degrees could potentially kill off the entire things. If I had more time, I would just throw something over them, but you have to, for 26 degrees, like need like lights and leaves and all kinds of things. It's just it's too complicated. I think it'd be easier just to go ahead, just get them out of the ground. Everybody's wondering, I get these big bird of paradise unpotted. It's a two-person job. Okay, so there's the back and forth. Keep it stable. <laughs> Nothing about this feels okay. <laughs> yeah, I think, okay. We're gonna try and fall again without me falling over. So that's done. Lots of dirt, lots of soil. It's a messy process, but it's worth it. Pull them out of the driveway with the rest of the plants, get them hosed off, sprayed down, and moved in. And I know I mentioned that I've been purging some things. Still taking out a lot of plants. I'm not purging that much. It's just like a few things. It's like, yeah, I don't need you anymore. But now here, here comes the hose. <laughs> and then here, high pressure. Gonna get into all the little crevices and get everything blasted out. And I'll rinse them down with some soapy water. Let that sit overnight. And I am going to be done with this. I mean, kind of done. Not really. There's still gonna be plenty to do, but the forecast was saying that in like three days, it's supposed to be about 30 degrees. Then it went down to 26. Well, it's gone up to 28, except now it's going to be tomorrow night instead of today. You know, the kicker is that it's only one night. It's just, it's just one night. And it's going to be like in the seventies after that. 26, 27, 28. Those are all temperatures that'll kill these. So I may as well just go ahead and pull them in. Even though I'm not ready, it's fine. It's whatever. Good thing there's at least space for plants now. A lot of space, actually. Things are coming along very nicely in here. I'm going to grab my soap, spray these down and call it a night. I just sort of jumped over everything there. So I wasn't gonna go over the spraying of everything because I talked about that in a video that should have been out a week or two ago, getting the bugs off the plants. I use a diluted soap or I will use a peppermint oil, which is what I switched over to because I ran out of soap. First I blast everything off the plants and then I go through, spray them down with the soapy water or peppermint or neem, whatever I have handy really. Get into everything, get all the bugs out. The areca palm, this is, if you're new to the channel, you might be not so happy about this, but in the fall, I actually cut all of the fronds off of the areca palm before I take it inside. I still leave the center spear. You don't want to cut those. That could kill the plant. And sometimes I'll leave like maybe one frond. The reason that I do that is because these areca palms are just so prone to getting mealybug infestations. These have been like my troublemaker plant when it comes to the mealybugs. And over the last couple of years, I've noticed that when I just 
take the fronds off and I'm able to get in and spray extremely heavily for the first few weeks that they're inside, several weeks really, that that usually does the trick and just makes getting through the winter so much easier. They grow fairly quickly. So like usually by January, mid-January, you can't even tell that the plant's been pruned down completely. So this is gonna look a little bit shocking the next time you see it. It's gonna be looking a little bit bare and a little bit naked, but that's, that's intentional. It's just so that I can get the sprays down in, in everything because they're so full and it's really important to be able to really get in there and get all the liquids and everything down and around everything just so much easier to do that when there aren't any fronds on the plants oh insulation's here uh, technically not insulation the foil stuff that's going to go up on top of the garage over the ceiling to help pull the heat in and looks like the new tripod might be here nope not the tripod that's okay i'm so glad this is here this very much needs to get put up before the plants go in. It's gonna be really hard to get that up when there's plants everywhere. It won't be impossible, it'll just be kind of tricky. I forgot that I shut the garage door. And now my face is covered in peppermint oil. Fine, that's okay. Very refreshing, I smell like Christmas. But I do know what this is. So let's not flash my address to the entire internet. Humane mouse traps. so uh, live catch. I noticed there, there are a lot of little poops in here when I was cleaning up like lots and lots of them and i assume that that was the chipmunks because i see the chipmunks coming in out of here all the time like all year and they can be really destructive those chipmunks but i was like well that it just is what it is they come in here for the bird seed which i now keep inside of something that they can't get to then i was sitting over there at the desk the other day and i heard a little ruffle and then i saw a mouse running around over here and it was really cute and i just i can't kill it so i'm going to get this set up so we can get that mouse cut or mice there probably are more than one and then i don't know let them go like the neighbor's house or something just kidding i'll take it to a park something like that why did i that's not where that goes this is how these traps work you push that end down a mouse comes in Ooh, it closes and it has these doors here on the back side that are very hard to open it says in the directions to just like grip it see that with two thumbs uh Here's why that does not work. So once you catch the mouse, you have to have both of your thumbs on this and have this pointing like towards your body. I tried doing it away and it's like impossible to open. Maybe some Vaseline or something, just need to wet it up so it'll open more easily. I was going to put peanut butter in this, but I don't have any and I have plenty of bird seed. They really seem to enjoy the bird seed. Get that, close it up, make sure the seed's all down at that end. Push the door down, and then I will go set these in the places where I was seeing the mouse poop. I'll wait till later on tonight, just because I'm not gonna be able to let the mouse go until morning, so I don't want it to have to spend too much time inside these, so I'll do it right before I go to bed. And then when I wake up, if there are mice in these, then I can go let them go, and they won't have to have been in these for too long. And I was saying that this needs to go up before all the plants come in. I don't know why I said that. There's plenty of space to work over here. I know it looks crowded, but I don't put plants in this area and this is where the ladder has to go. So th this is fine. I mean, this isn't fine. That's the wall I haven't organized yet. Stop judging me. I don't really have to rush to get that done. That's nice. Less rushing is better. Good morning, pumpkin. Where are you going? Pumpkin, come back. Hey, good morning, pumpkin. Did you sleep well, pumpkin? She was so snuggly last night. November 1st, trees just about out of leaves. And it's supposed to get cold tonight. You already know that. Yet everybody already knows what's going on. Had my fingers crossed, hoping that that forecast was going to change, but it hasn't. So the plants will be coming in tonight. Nothing in the mousetrap over here. Oh, well, what do we have here? Oh, look, oh, it's so cute. I'm not touching that until it's time to go ahead and release the mouse. Put some gloves on and take that to a nearby park and let it go into some bushes or something. I know, some people might think the humane traps are a little bit ridiculous. I don't. One is $12 for a two pack, so I like the reusability of them. So that is very nice. And I think it's nice to just let them go. Then there's the argument, but well, it's just, it could just die when you let it go. But it's the, I mean, if it's going to die in nature because something ate it, then at least something got to eat it and it didn't just get thrown into a trash can. Oh, that's just me, just how my brain works. Okay, I need to go release a mouse and then I'm gonna get back to work on the plants. Okay, mouse is free. I went ahead and let it go into the brush in the woods about a mile away and put some more seed in here, but the thing won't go back down. Did it chew, did it chew the little tab off of there? I don't know. And this is supposed to be reusable, but you can see it's not catching on the thing that holds the door down. I don't really know what I did there. 
I'll have to look at the directions again. I'm not going to be too thrilled if I can't if I can't reuse it, then this is wasteful. Need to figure something else out. Now, oh, free mouse, happy mouse. I'll live a nice, happy life out in the woods. Might be a snack for a snake or a hawk or something. So that's done, and... Are you ready for it? You ready? Look. Oh, uh, I did it. Everything's inside. Some things are looking a little bit better than others, like the papaya. It's a little bit mad at me right now. Things were pretty dry. See this hibiscus back here? So I definitely need to water... There's some more pruning to do. I tried to do all the pruning while I was outside just to keep the mess outside, but it's a lot of plants. It's easy to miss a few things here and there. I have a whole whole wall of things over here that need to get moved back over in this direction. But I figured these are fine over here for now. Just gives me more room to get some more things done over here before I start packing things and everything needs to go on this foil area and then plastic will go down, which I ordered the plastic. I don't think I'm going to get that put up in this video. It doesn't necessarily even need to be up in this video because it's only gonna be cold for one night. Tonight's supposed to be 28 degrees, which is ridiculous for this time of year. But after tonight, it's supposed to warm up to being like ridiculously warm for about two and a half, three weeks in November. So this is a hard pill to swallow that I had to move everything in just because of one cold night. Potentially could have had these plants outside until late November. It is what it is. Most of these would have died. Frost cloth, all those things, like it just, I, I don't know, it seemed too risky. And then there's some plants that are going to throw a bit of a fit. Like this hibiscus back here, apparently not too happy with being moved in. This hibiscus is fine. You know, sometimes plants have attitudes, plantitudes. They can, sometimes they're just wimps. When I'm done, there'll be a nice clear path in here, at least for a while. Eventually I'll fill it up with plants, like more plants, because I still do my plant shopping in the winter. Everything that's over here on the shelves isn't set in stone where it needs to be, like not at all, because I had people helping me and it was basically like fill up the gorilla cart and we were just unloading the plants. And then I figured later when I have the time and don't have family in town, then I can go ahead and arrange them properly to where they need to go. For the most part, cactus and succulents go up there because it's a shelf where I don't have too much watering. It's a good spot for them. It's a little bit more cool over here. At least it always has been. I'm doing some things a little bit differently this year. So maybe this winter it'll be a warmer. I don't know. But this whole grow space stays fairly warm. But the wall is insulated. But the windows are very, very old and poorly insulated. So a little bit of a cold draft comes in here. Which is okay for the succulents. Because I don't let them get terribly cold. Like, I don't think it ever drops below 50 right in that spot. And it's usually like in the 70s or 80s out here. So that's very rare that I don't have to worry about that. And yeah, just everything else. It's just a matter of rearranging some pruning, some TLC, a lot of TLC. And, you know, just wasn't really able to do much for the plants and baby them this year like I had hoped. It's more of just like keeping my fingers crossed and hoping that they would do okay with other people taking care of them and just with like just being outside letting nature take care of them. My whale fin has a little bit of damage on it. But it's all right. It has some new growth coming up. I'm not concerned about it. And there's a whole bunch of plants that you can't even, you can't see it. Lots of plants that are just soaking because they were bone dry. It's funny because it has just been raining and raining the last few weeks. We've had a few nice days, but not a ton. Or a few dry days, I should say. But the air is so much drier this time of year that it only takes like one day of no rain and they're just wilted and sad. It actually takes a lot more time to water this time of year than it does during the summer. I would actually prefer them to be kind of dry when I move them in, not bone dry. A few of them were bone dry, but for the most part, they were okay. They don't weigh as much <laughs> when they've dried out a little bit, so it makes it easier to move like the big things around like this areca palm. This palm is pretty heavy, mostly just because of the pot, not necessarily the palm. The palm itself isn't too bad. And it got its winter haircut that I mentioned. It's off with it all. It makes it so much easier to get in there and spray. I know it can be alarming to people who've never seen me do this before, but Trust me, it's okay. Do it every year. Like seriously, within a month or two, won't even notice that it's had a prune. I'm gonna give these probably a few hours to soak. There's oxygen. The pumps are moving. I'm not worried about rot or anything like that. It's just, I just really, they just need time to plump back up. I went ahead and got one of the fans put together so I can get that installed. And ideally at some point, I need to go ahead and get the rest of the foil stuff put up on these other spots where that never got done. I'll do that when I get the ladder out and change this fan out, which I'll I guess I could do that right now. The ceiling part, I don't know. I might have to wait and hold off on that one for a little bit, but I can at least change the fan out. That th This piece of junk needs to go. I'm going to replace it with this piece of junk. The Deluxe Simple Deluxe. Beautiful name. There's two of them, and they were the same price as those other greenhouse fans. I don't see a reason to keep spending money on these things if they're just going to break. It's nice having the two-pack. I have a backup for when that one breaks, but watch this one last for like five years. If I had the space, I would put up another fan, but I really, there's, there's really nowhere to do that. The one's always been okay. I don't necessarily have to have two. No, I have time to think about that, about whether or not to try and find a spot for another fan 
like I said, the one should be okay. I am tired though. It has been an extremely, extremely busy day. I'm gonna call it a night and pick back up in the morning. It doesn't matter. I d you guys won't know the difference. We're inside now. It's pretty hard to tell when things are day to day. So I might let these soak overnight. They would be okay. It's not gonna kill them. And uh, I'll pick back up in the morning because I'm tired. It's time to get some rest. And I have family in town helping with everything. We should spend time together. So I will worry about all that another time probably in the morning <laughs> good morning see i bet i could have just not said anything nobody would have known the difference it doesn't matter i've been looking through the directions here on this fan and i'm realizing as i was looking at the pictures that have like the control panel thing that uh this is like basically identical to the fan i already have but half the cost is the same modes all the same buttons and features the remote control even looks pretty much the same you can get things mass produced over in china things that are just already being made and just pay them to brand it for you they'll, so they'll slap your name on it that's why there's so many products that are identical but have different brand names i'd call that a bargain save some money there unless i'm wrong that's always a possibility just because some of the features is, are the same doesn't mean that they all are like the mounting plate looks a little bit different on here which kind of sucks because i remember installing this fan the one it's up there that one that fan i remember installing that one last year and not being too thrilled with how it was going like the drywall anchors i was putting in they were being like pushed into the drywall i had to like go out and get heavy duty drywall anchors the ones that came with it just didn't do the trick i didn't feel safe with it so it might just be a repeat of that and who knows how many times can i drill holes in the exact same spot that could be a problem too i might have to scoot it over i don't know it's really not that big i don't really even need to film putting the fan i'm just gonna put a fan on the wall i've done it i think two or three times here on the channel as it is so that's not that big of a deal i do need to get this desk cleared off it was nice having it relatively clean there are some plants sitting over here that were in the house like my frost peperomia this peperomia does not enjoy life at all unless it has constant access to water so i need to put some wicking cord into the bottom of that like i've done over here on this calathea right there i need to do the same thing with this and get that onto something self-watering because it is extremely high maintenance if i don't do that and i don't have time for that i'm not in the mood for high maintenance plants but i have had to move some of the plants out from in the house because i'm also setting up all my christmas stuff very early which i mean i'm fine with there's nothing else to do really but since i have the family in town helping with things that I just need to get all those totes and it's just a lot easier to do that with somebody else with other people around to help with all the lifting and moving so I've had to clear out my garden window to make room for Christmas things that'll be in a different video probably or maybe not I don't know but what I do know is that this fan needs to get set up like now because I have all these plants soaking in here and I don't want to pull them out and just have stale stagnant air the air needs to be moving around to get them not like bone dry but they don't need to stay sopping wet for a long time either starting to think that this is going to be a very long video but that's okay i've had people messaging me saying that they missed the long videos so i'll just go with it though the videos have been really short there's just there's been a lot going on around here so haven't been able to vlog but once this video is up everything will be back to normal i got the old one down look how dirty that is that's from one year isn't that gross so here's a little side by side and i'm looking at these and seeing that they are pretty much identical but things are laid out a little bit differently like this has low it's no it's really hard to see it's pretty dark over here right now they have all the same features they're just laid out a little bit differently and even most of the mechanisms in the fan look pretty much the same fortunately there's one thing that's not the same oh, there's the original mounting bracket it's just a plate that slides over onto another plate and here's the new one that's a little bit disappointing but still it's only two screws not a big deal i'll have this up in no time but i forgot i left my drill outside oops see the cold damage I don't think that it actually got down to 28 degrees like right here. It definitely got pretty cold. A frost cloth over everything over here and it was mostly okay. Some damage here to the pack of stackies, but these are tough. That'll bounce back no problem. I put a frost cloth over the front of this bed, not over the impatience because like they're doomed anyways, but I wanted to try and preserve the purple heart plants as long as I could. Eh, just is what it is. I don't really, I, there should be a garden tour out by the time this video comes out of just like how everything just kind of looks dead so you will have seen that i think that'll be the video that comes out right before this one things are looking 
pretty sad out here. It's a drastic transformation. Oh, and here's that guard window. This was all full of the terrariums, now it's full of little gingerbread houses. So of the terrariums, they're over here now. Man, they were dirty. I didn't even realize, I thought it was just condensation, but when I touched them, I was like, oh, you guys are sticky, so I'll give them a good scrub. I've been trying to not touch those terrariums. I planted them up for Terrarium Tuesday last year and was hoping to go a full year without really doing much of anything with them. I've only had to crack them open to water them one time. And they're doing pretty well. That's neither here nor there. I need to find, where's the tip? Where's my head? Where's the tip that goes on here? Okay, moment of truth. See how this works. Turn it on. Already doing the swing. I can feel it. I don't think it's as loud as the other fan. Seems good. It's a fan. It's not terribly loud. It's doing the trick. There's a breeze blowing through the plants. Do want to adjust it though. Turn the swing off. Oh, that's right in the microphone. Need to point this down some more. Do you go down anymore? I hope so. There we go. That's a little bit better because it need, the whole point is to blow the... I'll talk when I'm not right in front of the fan. Yeah, it um... <laughs> drop something. Turn that swing back on. The whole point of the fan is to blow the hot air back down and to keep the air moving around. It's not just to have circulation for the plants. The plants need it. I'd have a fan in here regardless, but need to keep the warm air that goes up pushed back down and keep that moving around for more even temperatures and humidities and you get it. It's a fan. And it was pretty easy to install. I'm not going to credit the fan for that. I think that the assembly having the two holes like that's kind of stupid unless you're going to give people a template. It wasn't complicated at all but this is also like the fourth or fifth one I've set up so it went very very smoothly. I wasn't so sure about how that was going to go because at one point I was like oh it's going to be easy. This will be so simple and then as soon as I said that I was like oh that was dumb. Don't jinx yourself, but it was okay. Ah, and that feels nice. It's nice having a breeze in here. Despite it being really, really cold last night, it's actually pretty toasty in here. It's like 78, 80, which isn't like really hot, I know, but the humidity, it is quite humid. It's very sticky. So it's nice to have a little bit of a breeze because that gets uncomfortable and gross. This is weird. It's a weird feeling. I've been working out here for so long. Been in little increments for the most part. There have been some days like when I was actually like gutting all the shelves over over there and sterilizing the floor. I didn't film everything because not everything was film worthy. I mean I basically I mopped. It's not that exciting. Didn't film moving the plants in partially because well I wasn't doing it by myself and uh, because I've done it so many times and I released a video not too long ago showing what I do where I spray them down, wash them off and prune them up, all, the, all that stuff. Now I need to pull the plants out. The problem is it's supposed to warm up. Like today it was 30 or 28, whatever it was last night, but I think the high today is like 60. Then it's supposed to be in the upper 70s for a couple of weeks. So I don't know how much time I need to actually spend arranging the plants. As chances are, since I had to rush to bring some of these in, I'm probably gonna push them back out just to the driveway so that I can keep spraying them let them get as much natural light as possible before having to be in here all winter long. So I think maybe I'll just leave these like this for now and then put them outside and then bring them back in. Which isn't ideal, but I think it would be better for the plants. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the forecast. Tomorrow if it's warmer, I'll probably scoot these back out. Oh, and tomorrow's election day. Wonder what's gonna happen. That'll be interesting. Finally got the plants pulled out of here. They had a very, very heavy soak. Remember the Dresania from the beginning of the video? It's still looking pretty bad. I went ahead and gave it another soak just because I wanted these stems to plump out some more before I start tugging away at these leaf bits. And it has, it's firmed up quite a bit. So once this dries off, I can go ahead and get all these old leaves pulled off and get it moved all the way over to the plant shelves, which well, I haven't finished setting them up, but I did do a lot of reorganizing and moving around. There's still plenty to be done there. Largely that I want to get those put onto the wicking cord. Pretty sure I already talked about that. I know, this video has been going on for a while, a few weeks. I'm having trouble remembering what we've already talked about and what I haven't. So if things get a little bit redundant, I apologize. I need to run a new extension cord to my heaters. That seems kind of boring. Probably won't do that here in the vlog but I do always have people asking me how I heat things. I use electric space heaters for this area out here and the outlet that the main one plugs into is all the way up there, up at the ceiling. There are three different breakers that go to everything out here in this space so I can have a heater on each one of those. The thing with space heaters though is that, well, they're dangerous. They're very dangerous. They, you know, burn your house down. Obviously something don't want to happen, right? So I had to go out and get a new extension cord for my main heater just because I noticed that the other one was warm 
the cord that was originally there was warm to the touch, which is really, really dangerous. That's not supposed to happen, so I upgraded to a, I believe this is a 12 gauge cord. It's nice and thick, heavily insulated, so in theory, much safer to work with, but also much more pricey. I tend to get my extension cords from like the holiday section at the hardware store right after Christmas because they're dirt cheap and get like a 75 foot extension cord for like $3, something like that. But those aren't extension cords that I want hooked up to a space heater. I'll use them for like spotlights, low voltage, low wattage things outdoors. A little something I wanted to mention because because I do get asked about heating the space and I wanted to make sure to have that little disclaimer there. I also have been looking into getting some uh, like wireless smoke detectors to put out here. I want to find something that will alert to my phone if something were to happen out here. That's the only thing that I really don't like about the grow space with the electric heaters is every winter I'm like a little bit on edge. The wall behind me does have fire retardant insulation in it because it's required by coating but still like that's not going to stop the house from burning down if there's an electrical fire. That's not something I like ever want to take lightly. I always make sure that the ground's totally clear around my heaters that there's never debris or anything that can get into them. Make sure that the intakes are always clear of dust and hair and it's dangerous. It's dangerous things. Hopefully the new cord will help solve that problem. If not, I'm going to throw out that heater and get a different one. These Talansias are looking really dry too. They could probably use a soak. Any Talansias that have that like whitish coating on them, I go very easy on the watering. It's only the glossy ones that I make sure that they get a soak at least once a week. The others, sometimes I'll push it every two weeks. Just to pet this, I don't know how this turned into a Tolancia Care video. That's not what's going on here. It has been a few days since the last clip. Uh, the, you know, the, all the stuff happened with the elect. I don't even want to talk about it. It's too much. Don't need to. We all know what's going on there. One thing that's been fun about having multiple people <laughs> move my plants in with me is it's been kind of a surprise. Being like, hey, we're. Like, I've been going through digging through things and be like, oh, that's where this is. Oh, good. There's, there's like, there's all these plants that I just was like. I don't know where they went and I keep finding them moving them out that's something that's going to take a while like I'm just now noticing that my fireball neo regelia that's I don't know where that went but it's supposed to be right here that's supposed to be hanging up in the spot right here at some point I need to restring this pole because I think that it would be best for it to have a some sort of support on each end so that it stops doing this leaning thing. That's dangerous. Sometimes the plants want to slide off of it if they're not balanced properly. That's bad. Still so much to do. I'm going to insulate this wall during the winter time. I was originally going to try and just get every single thing done in one video and I decided that that's a bad idea because then what the heck are we going to do all winter? It's part of the vlogs is doing little things and improving on the grow space that in time i just i don't i wouldn't have time to have done that anyway i do still have to get the plastic hung up out here that did show up in the mail there's still a few things i'm waiting on so that'll probably be a couple weeks till i can get that done which is okay it's not dreadfully cold outside it has cooled off that warm front was nice while it lasted but it's certainly cooling off quite a bit i'm going to black out the front of these drainage tubs because I, like I mentioned I don't want to hear people talking about how the water's dirty it's fine don't worry about it at some point I want to get drains hooked up onto these so I'll have a drain that goes from this one down to the one over here on the bottom and then that will go into a bucket of some sort same thing over there on the other side that way I don't have to worry about these overflowing a good way to make sure that they always stay at a specific level and there are still plants outside the more hardy plants the mule palms windmill palms when it drops below 20 to 15 degrees I'll be moving those inside but that's usually only for like a week two weeks at a time it does make things much more crowded but it's okay like I said it's only for a little while when they have to come in and there are some plants I moved in just because I wanted to do videos on them but I haven't gotten around to it yet like this dragon's wing begonia that's kind of hard to see because it's overexposed and then there's a uh, mandevilla behind there and I have a burst of fern that needs to be repotted there's gonna be a bunch of repottings happening in fact the Thai the Thai constellation that has to happen next week I have to get that done that plant it's fine in its little pot but it isn't proportionate so it's the whole thing just wants to fall over so it needs to go into something bigger i have all the supplies to do that i just if you've been watching my channel you know some for some reason i'm putting it off i don't know why but i'll be glad to get that done anything else needs to be repotted or just little plants little things the anthurium over here does have some cold damage i mentioned before sometimes it can take a few days to a few weeks for that to show so i thought it was okay but it turned out i was very wrong i mean it is okay it's already pushing out 
new leaves there, but all this other stuff on here, that's, that's not good. Don't want that to happen. And I have dormant plants too, like this costus right here. I need to get that cut back and put over with the rest of the dormant plants. I could go on for a long time with the things that I need to do. There's no reason to. I've done enough in this video. Be doing those other things in future vlogs. I'm looking forward to getting back outside because there's still things I want to do out there and having the vlogs in more of a real time instead of <laughs> like four weeks of randomness. It's been a very chaotic month here, but I got everything done, needed to be done, and I'm feeling great about it. I'm really actually looking forward to getting back to filming videos in here. It's nice being able to use the lights, not having to worry about the time of day or background noise from neighbors and planes and alarms, all those things. And the holidays are coming up, so I'm gonna get crafty over here. Looking forward to that too. Oh, and one thing that I kept meaning to mention, but I just forgot, the fan that I took down, it is uh, under warranty. I contacted the manufacturer and I have to have the receipt. I don't know where it is. I'll find it though, so at least I'll get a replacement. I don't really want the replacement because I already know that I don't like that fan, but that way the money's not wasted. So technically I'll have two backup fans to the one that's up there. That's good. I don't know if I had mentioned the Colocasias, the Maui Golds. I pulled one up as a clump and let it go dormant. The other one I left potted in with this bird of paradise here, just to have a little contrast, see what the difference is between the two. The dormant one, I don't think there'll be anything to really report on obviously until springtime when it gets replanted I'll be interested to see what happens with this one how it does in here throughout the winter time and then the big alocasias which are it's gonna be hard to we got to push through everything here and then the big alocasias like the really big gigantic ones these got pruned back and now I just have them in yard waste bags I'm going to allow these to stay dormant throughout the winter time that's going to free up a lot of space over with the plants because typically I have all of my alocasias right here along the back edge of this pond and each one of them is in a 20 by 20 inch square container which is just too much that takes up this entire back wall here I'd rather use it for something else I don't know what yet don't actually have a plan but I needed to make sure that I had better access to the drains this year because I might run an external filter instead of the waterfall filters like I used to because that would help keep the water from cooling as quickly and I don't want plants piled up right in front I mean there's plants right here right now they're not going to be there forever they're just hanging out here while I get other things taken care of gotta get things under control i had also mentioned uh using de powder out here once i get all the plants in i do plan on doing that but not until the plastic is hung up if i don't then that powder will go everywhere on everything out here in the garage i don't want to deal with that that nidia palms they need all their old foliage pruned off they're pushing out new stuff up there they're fine they just go through little spells about twice a year where they get really old a nasty foliage on them and they push out fresh green growth. Those will end up going in the house. That'll be in a vlog and everything else. Is good. All this stuff over here, it's got to go over here. I didn't spend an entire day cleaning up everything over here to fill it with plants because they need to be over here where there will be plastic and it'll be much warmer over here on this side when they're in the bubble. The bubble's not here yet, but there will be a bubble here in a few weeks. As far as the care out here goes right now, since the temperatures are a little bit cooler because I don't have the plastic up in the heater, <laughs> other heater isn't plugged in, I'm not watering very frequently. I'm letting things go more on the dry side. Don't want them to rot. Also don't want them getting too crispy either. That's not good. And I am spraying very consistently with a mild diluted dish soap water. Dish soap water, soap dish. You know what I'm talking about? Put a little bit of dish soap in the, we I did a video on it. You, you know what's going on. I mean, very frequently, because as I mentioned before, I wasn't able to do heavy sprays on things for multiple weeks prior to bringing them in because it was, it rained like every single day. So I couldn't get that done. Still more pruning to do. Have some plants with a little bit of cold damage on them and lots and lots and lots of watering. I'm probably going to do that when I'm done recording and then get this edited. I know this was a long one, but it's been a while. Haven't had any long vlogs in a very long time. I thought about splitting it up into two parts, but I just didn't really film this in a way where I thought it would like work to cut it into two parts. I figured people can always pause it and come back or just not with it, not watch it. That's always an option. I find it interesting when I get a complaint about the video length when it says how long the video is before you click on it. What's that about? I mean, come on now. Anyways, if you did watch till the end, thank you. I am flattered by that because I mean, why? No, I really do appreciate it. I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, a great life, and everything's just going beautifully for you. That is so washed out.
Is that better? Well, now it's too dark. It's okay. It's fine. Bring it back up. I'm thinking next week there's going to be a few days that are nice enough to get back outside and maybe do some work in the garden, do some winter planters. Probably within a week or two, get back to doing some things in here, back and forth. I don't know. They're vlogs. It's just going to be whatever is going on that week. Of course, comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. I thought was, that was a weird hand gesture there. What was that supposed to be? And time to go. Oh, the cryptanthus that I put into that cloche earlier in the video that they did they didn't really make it they're still under the glass but they're like covered in mold and fungus i don't have high hopes for those but i don't know i'll give it another week or so i'll spray them down with some peroxide and see what happens anyways of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye